Number 13. State which of the following species are amphiprotic and write chemical equations illustrating the amphiprotic character of these species. And then we have letter B. So we have to know whether HPO4 minus is an amphiprotic species. Now before we do that, I just want to say I think there might be a little bit of a mistake here. HPO4 never exists as just a negative one charge because phosphate, PO4, is always a negative three. So if you add just one hydrogen, it turns into HPO4, right? That's what this is. And you drop a number. So basically it turns into now a negative two, not a negative one. So we're going to go based off of what HPO4 should always be as a charge, and that's negative two. Now let's dive in and say whether this ion is amphiprotic. Another word for amphiprotic is amphoteric. So your teacher or professor might talk about amphoteric species, but amphiprotic, amphoteric, tomato, tomato, that just means that one single ion or a molecule can act as an acid and it has properties to act as a base. So you got two different properties here. Let's see whether HPO4 2 minus can act as an acid. Well, remember, Bronsted Lowry acids, they always donate hydrogens, aka they lose a hydrogen, right? They lose one H plus. That's hydronium. But I'd like to just say hydrogen. Now, if we look over here for HPO4 2 minus, it has a hydrogen. So you can lose the hydrogen because you have it. And any time that you see a H in the front of a compound, that's going to be an acid. So this is a definite check. Now let's just see whether this can act as a base. Well, remember, Bronsted-Lowry bases, they always gain one hydronium, right? One H plus from the certain acid in the solution. But how do I really notice that, um, you know, just look by looking at the ion? Well, generally speaking, if you see a negative charge or if it's neutral, it's going to be a base. Not all the time with neutral compounds, but definitely for those negatives. So I definitely see a negative two at the back. This is the basic component and the front hydrogen is the acid component. So HPO4 two minus has both acid and base properties. So it would be classified as amphiprotic or amphoteric. And now we just have to write chemical equations. So we're just going to do this twice. Twice is nice. HPO4, we'll say two minus one time, and then HPO4, two minus, right? All right. So we're going to act one as the acid, and then we're going to act the other one as the base. Now remember, if you're, you have an acid, you can only react with a base. You can never have two acids on one side of the equation or two uh, bases on one side of the equation. And that's going to make your compounds on the product side. And if we're labeling H2PO4, uh, HPO4 2 minus as a base down here, it's got to react with an acid of some sort. And then that will give us our products. So now this is where your answer might differ from mine. It just really depends on what base and what acid you use. There's tons of them out there. So you can use something that doesn't have an acidic uh, hydrogen at all. You could use like cyanide, CN minus. Uh, you could use just a single element like sulfur, right? The sulfide ion doesn't have any uh, hydrogens. Um, maybe in this case, let's do, I don't know. I guess we'll do CN minus. For the acid, you could pick any one of your six strong acids. Right, because those six strong acids will always be acids, they'll never be bases. So you can choose HBr, you could choose HI, you could choose HCl, you know, any of the strong ones. It really doesn't matter. Maybe I will choose HI. Hi. <laughs> so we'll choose that one as the acid. Now let's go back to the top. So when you're doing acid-base reactions, remember the acid is going to lose a hydrogen. And because of that, the acid will always turn into the conjugate base. 
So the acid always turns into the conjugate base. And then the base, since bases always gain a hydrogen, bases will always turn into the conjugate acid. So it's like, you know, reverse. Now all we got to do is just fill out what these two are. Well, let's start with the acid. Your acid, if it's turning into a conjugate base, you're always going to lose one hydrogen. So find the hydrogen on HPO4. Well, there was only one of them. It was right in the front. So you could just get rid of it. All the other elements come along for the ride. So it would just be PO4. And now you just have to adjust for the charge. When you're losing a hydrogen, you're always going to be minusing one to the overall charge. So there was a two minus charge here. So negative two minus one, that's a negative three. And there's that phosphate ion that I was talking about before. Now let's do the base side. If you're starting off with the base and you want to get to the conjugate acid, you add a hydrogen, or you gain a hydrogen. So there was no hydrogens here, so just stick it in the front. So it would just be H and then CN. Now just account for the charge. You plus one from what you originally started with. Cyanide ion had a negative one charge. So negative one plus one. Negative one plus one is zero. So you don't even have to write a charge here. It's neutral. Now we just have to do the same thing, but on the flip side for the bottom one. Now you're starting off with HPO4 being a base. So bases will always turn into their conjugate acids. Conjugate acids. Maybe I'll just put it over here. And then HI being an acid will always turn into its conjugate base. There we go. So now we just got to figure out what those two are. And then we're done with the problem. So bases to acids. Bases to acids, they always gain one hydrogen. So you had only one. So now you're just adding one more. So it would be H2. All the other elements come along for the ride, PO4. And then negative two, right? This would be a negative two. And now you're plusing one because you gained a hydrogen. So negative two plus one, that's just a negative one. So I could just leave that negative there. Now we just got to do for the acid. Acids to bases, you lose the hydrogen. Well, there was only one hydrogen to lose, so get rid of it. Now all you have left is just I, and then just take the charge into consideration. Minus one, right? There was nothing up top here. That means it was a zero to begin with. So zero minus one, zero minus one is a negative one. Or you could just say a negative. And that's it. Those are your two equations to show that HPO4 2 minus is amphiprotic or amphoteric. I really hope this helped, guys. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Keep studying hard. And I'll see you in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.